So how concerned should Canadians be over these alleged incidents of election interference? Let's find out. With me for some more perspective now, Ward Elcock, former director of CSIS, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, and Guy Saint-Jacques, former Canadian ambassador to China. Hello to both of you. Thank you very much for making the time. Mr. Elcock, I'll start with you. Uh, in your capacity as uh, director of CSIS, I'm wondering what your perspective is on the scope of what's being alleged as far as China's potential interference in, in the 2021 election. Is it that it, we just know a lot more about it, or is it a lot more than what China's been doing in, in the past? I think what China has been doing more recently has increased significantly since even my time as director, although even then China was, was probably the most important target. Uh, so the fact that it has increased more is, is problematic, uh, and, but it goes with the, the, the whole, whole process of China's engagement with the world. We're just another part of the world where they're engaging more than they used to and where some of the things that they used to do, which are covert or are unfriendly, uh, they just do more of them. What was laid out there, Mr. Saint-Jacques, in the, in the Globe and Mail as far as uh, what is being alleged China did in, in 2021? Is any of it news to you? Well, I think it's uh, an escalation. I knew that they were interfering more and more. And as Mr. Elcock was just saying, in fact, since uh, Xi Jinping came to power in 2012, he has uh, substantially increased the budget of the United Front War Department, which is charged with uh, propaganda abroad, especially trying to influence the uh, Chinese uh, diaspora around the world. And when I was ambassador, I knew that they, they were trying to influence uh, uh, some politicians at the uh, mostly at the uh, provincial and uh, federal level. But in fact, what uh, we learn uh, in those most recent articles uh, is a, a step uh, much further. And I find this uh, very worrying. Does it necessitate, Mr. Elcock, from, from where you sit, a stronger response? It depends what you mean by stronger response and, and, and what it is you can do. It's, what can be done from where you sit? That's complicated. I mean, this is, in a sense, counterintelligence work, although, as, as Guy pointed out, it isn't just simply intelligence services. There is the, the uh, U, uh, United Front effort on the part of China, which, is, has, which they have emphasized even more in the last few years. So it... it it, but it is a counter, essentially a counterintelligence investigation. Some of it you could take part, take care of, by putting in place a registry. You would catch the people who are buying friendships and so on. The Chinese who are who are who are being recruited by the Chinese as friends of China, so to so to speak. Uh, the more the more difficult part is the clandestine part, the part that's being taken care of by intelligence officers or the foreign interference that's being done by foreign intelligence officers from China, and, and in some cases, other countries as well. The, the first part of the solution being proposed that Mr. Elcock just touched on, uh, Mr. Saint-Jacques, is what, uh, for example, some conservative candidates allege is the reason they were targeted by China. The, the proposition or the proposal that uh, Canada adopt a, a foreign agent's registry. Do, do you think that is likely to... Um, sort of prompt China to to target candidates? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, we should uh, have been uh, uh, adopting the Australian approach a, a long time ago. Australia was faced with a similar problem about four years ago, and they adopted uh, four laws to try to prevent foreign interference. And one of the law uh, uh, resulted in the creation of a registry for everyone that represents a state or an enterprise or a foreign government. Of course, nobody said it was directed at China, but everyone knew that it was. And, and I think that uh, uh, when I hear the prime minister sa uh, saying, well, the result of the election was not uh, influenced by that, well, uh, I would make a comparison with a hockey game. Uh, what about, you know, someone coming to uh, steal your hockey stick or... Uh, uh, cut the laces on your uh, skates, and uh, you get on the ice. And, of course, the, the other team has uh, more chances of winning. And you say, well, you know, the game was decided on the ice. So it's uh, something similar that, in my view, requires a, a full investigation. Uh, you, you know, the, uh, it was reported that there were Chinese students that work as volunteers. Well, you know, an investigation uh, could ask uh, uh, candidates, uh, uh, because I'm sure they have a, 
uh, compile information on all those uh, volunteers who who they were, uh, and uh, you know we, we need to to sort this out. And and I think there are a number of measures that need to be taken to counter this kind of uh, behavior, including, if required, expelling Chinese diplomats. Uh, let me pick up on that point, Mr. Alcock, um, because that is something the opposition has called for. Basically, the, at the heart of the political back and forth over this is whether the government is, A, taking it seriously enough and, B, addressing the issue as fully as it could. On the prospect of expelling diplomats, your thoughts on that? The prospect of dispelling, uh, expelling diplomats can, can actually backfire. Uh, not always, perhaps, but it can. Uh, there was a, an occasion some years back when, when, the, when Canada expelled something like 12 Russian uh, GRU and KGB officers. Uh, the Russians turned around and expelled virtually the whole of the embassy, the whole of the real embassy in, in Moscow, plus a whole lot of people who hadn't even made it to Moscow yet, who were in the process of preparing to go to Moscow, effectively destroying the the foreign affairs program, the foreign affairs program, vis-a-vis -vis Russia, for a period of years. So it it can backfire. The question of what you can actually do is a difficult one. I mean, for the example, in the case of the money provided to a candidate, uh, if if it's illegal to provide money to a candidate, then you can prosecute somebody. But then you've got to prove where the money actually came from, and that can be difficult too, because you may have to reveal sources that you don't want to reveal who provided you the information of the, about the links that would allow you to know where that information came from, where the money came from. So this is more complicated than, than certainly uh, the political parties would like it to be, I'm sure. Uh, they would like it to be much simpler. This is complicated stuff, and it will be hard to work out in simple ways. Uh, Mr. St. Jacques, just circling back then to, to the point you made, and it's certainly one that, that you've made before as China does grow more adversarial, that you kind of, uh, you know, ha have to take a posture that, that stands up to them kind of thing. Um, and, and that's what, what you just outlined as well. Why do you think at this juncture that is so crucial? Well, you know, the what China has been doing is they, they have been uh, gradually being more... Uh, uh, forceful in their approach, and uh, their attitude is that if it uh, does not generate any reaction, well, you know, we have the green light and we continue. And the only language that China understands is firmness, and we have to push back. And maybe, you know, before expelling people, uh, we should uh, uh, convoke the Chinese ambassador or the, uh, the consul general in uh, Toronto or Vancouver and tell them that we are aware of activities that goes against uh, bilateral relations against international treaties, and if it, this is repeated, uh, they will be they will, people will be expelled. So you have to give them a very stern warning uh, and let them know that that you watch. But otherwise, uh, if you don't do anything, if uh, uh, you know they they will always continue to to push, and our space will be gradually uh, reduced, and our democracy uh, will be affected. Okay, I have to leave it there. I appreciate the analysis from both of you. Thanks, Mr. Elcock. Thanks, Mr. St. Jacques. Thank you.